baby born is going to tip the planet's population to 7 billion. With one in seven going hungry now, how can the world feed even more? Severe stresses on our world's limited resources means using less energy, less water. It hasn't rained properly around this region for two years running. It's being called a national disaster now of epic proportion. The record-breaking temperatures are now driving up food prices. Agriculture is facing its biggest challenge ever. And we have to meet this challenge in the midst of climate change. But it boils down to the fact that without crop diversity, we will not be able to feed the world. Crop diversity is the biological foundation of agriculture. It's the raw material, the stuff of evolution in our agricultural crops. In the absence of any kind of coordinated conservation, the modernization of agriculture has meant the loss of a lot of crop diversity. And when you look forward at less nutrients, less water, less energy, then the one thing you know that you're gonna need is more diversity. Because crop varieties that are more resilient to the kind of stresses that we see in the environment are exactly what we're going to need in the future. And we're going to do that through the diversity that we find in the seed banks. Through plant breeding, we can combine the best features of uh, different uh, plants to make these better adapted varieties. But saving the diversity is a prerequisite for using it. So we've been lucky that there is a lot of diversity to be found in plant gene banks around the globe. Unfortunately, funding gene banks has not been so easy keeping the seeds viable can't be started and stopped uh, on a whim. And so the Global Crop Diversity Trust was established to provide this type of long-term funding uh, to protect the crop species that we're all dependent upon. By having an endowment fund, we have resources that are available for the long term and we can draw investment income from those resources to finance the annual cost of keeping the collections. The Crop Trust is working to establish a global system for the conservation of crop diversity. We know accidents happen. Gene banks can be lost. Natural disasters are happening a lot now in the world. Gene banks are in grave danger of being lost. And without a backup, material would be lost forever. Svalbard is the final backup. So if anything goes wrong in a plant gene bank around the globe, you can go to Svalbard and retrieve the material. This facility, I think, is almost the only thing I can think of these days where all the countries of the world have gotten together to do something that's long-term, sustainable, and positive. So Svalbard is a very important part of the global system. But our job is also to make crop diversity available to the farmers, the breeders, and the scientists.
because of the impact of climate change on agriculture. The interdependence of countries on each other's diversity is growing by the day. The International Treaty provides the fundamental legal framework for the work of the Global Crop Diversity Trust by establishing exchange between the countries and that will ensure that we can feed a world population under changing climatic conditions. The Crop Trust has a big job to do in the years to come. We cannot do this alone. We need partners. Everybody has the responsibility to support the global common good that is crop diversity. This is a call to action for everybody.